Take a look at this picture. There's something missing. Watch this. That's better. A shadow. And that's a good tip to remember. Put shadows into your pictures and make them look more realistic. For a start, it makes things look as if they're standing firmly on the ground instead of floating around in mid-air. Now, take a look at this girl. She looks as if she's floating around in mid-air at the moment, but a quick squiggle shadow and now her feet are planted very firmly on the ground. Of course, if you do want things to float around in mid-air, like this girl, then it's just a case of drawing the shadow some distance away from the bottom of the object, or in her case, from her feet, and now she's flying around in midair. Now, when you are drawing shadows, you have to decide which direction to draw them in. And here's another good tip. Shadows are cast away from the light. I'll show you what I mean. Just take a look at these balls. Now, this ball here on the left, let's pretend the light is coming from above the ball from, say, the sun or a lamp or a bulb, and it's shining down in this direction, so the shadow will be cast away from the light, so the ball's shadow will be underneath the ball. Now, the light is shining on this ball in this direction, so this ball's shadow will be cast away from the light in this direction. Now, let's try this ball. Let's put the sun up here this time, and again, it shines in that direction, so again, the ball's shadow is cast away from the light. Now, I'm just going to draw a little lamp down here, the light bulb in there, next to this ball, and if I shine the light in this direction, then this ball's shadow is cast in this direction, but because that lamp is quite low to the ground, the shadow is very long. And that's why your shadows are long at the end of the day when the sun is going down and it's very low in the sky. So, OK, let's put some shadows into these cartoons. Now, here's Nick. He's taking his dog for a walk at night. The lamp is shining down in this direction, so Nick's shadow will be cast in that direction, and so will the dogs. Suddenly, they hear a noise from down the alleyway. Nick shines his torch down the alleyway, and it's only a cat. But Nick's torch is quite low to the ground, so the cat's shadow is cast away from the light in this direction, and it's a very long shadow. And not only does it go across the ground, but it's so long, it goes up the wall. And don't forget, shadows go up things as well as across the ground. Now, Nick's dog hates cats, so it goes zooming off after the cat. Nick is tugged along by the lead, and he goes flying through the air. So his shadow is still cast in this direction because of the lamp, but his shadow is no longer touching his feet because he's flying through the air. And look at that, he's left the ground. So the dog goes off in pursuit of the cat. Nick is dragged along. Now you've got the moonlight up here shining down on the dog, so the dog's shadow is cast in this direction. And because Nick is still flying through the air, let's do his shadow away from his body. There he is, still flying through the air. Eventually, they catch up with the cat, and Nick's dog pins the cat up against the wall. Shines Nick's torch on the cat, and again, because the torch is very low to the ground, the cat's shadow is very long. But the cat is now leaning right up against the wall, so the shadow goes up the wall, but it's still a long shadow. Now, the cat begs for mercy, offers the dog a sweet, and because he's a greedy dog, he accepts the sweet. And don't worry, it's a happy ending because they become great friends. In fact, they become such good friends that they start to take moonlit walks together. And there's the moon. It's really low in the sky, so the shadows are nice and long, and they're going off in this direction, away from the light. Try it yourself. Make your drawings a lot more realistic and put shadows in them.